My most recent school lockdown was a spine-tingling experience that I will never forget. Envisioning a school building that is essentially composed of windows can provide the perfect backdrop for an actual horror film. It was there that I was attempting to shield my students from a dangerous escapee who had jumped onto our campus. Allow me to say that nothing could have prepared me for the level of fear I was feeling, despite having completed the lockdown training and being familiar with the procedure. Dealing with a situation that could potentially endanger your life is a different matter entirely from knowing what to do in theory. Those windows in my classroom became evil weak points instead of just windows looking out into the outside world. I saw a glimpse of the faces of my students as they displayed a mixture of curiosity and fear. Teenagers have a strange way of balancing fear with a carefree attitude, even when they knew something was wrong. They were chatting on their phones, whispering and laughing, as if this was just another routine. I was compelled to tell them to shut up, even though I suppose it was preferable to widespread hysteria. Safety had to be prioritized due to the lockdown. With a worried expression on her face, one of my students approached me. A low voice said, Hey, my friends are hiding in the bathroom. My body started to shake with fear. Fearing for those children in the restroom, I knew I had to do something, so I reached for my phone and texted my friend in campus security. In a prompt reply, he gave me his word that they would locate the girls. This situation's handling of security was peculiar. My friend, one of the security guards, had to move carefully to get into the bathroom. Before opening the door, he described how he introduces himself. Shaking with terror, the girls were huddled close together inside. Their wide, scared eyes were fixed on my friend, and it was clear how vulnerable they were in that little space. As uncomfortable as that situation was, it was just getting started. What was even more horrifying was that there was a purpose behind the lockdown. Someone had gained access to our campus, and the fugitive was using a small child as a human shield. It was an awful scene. He issued a warning to all of us, saying that if we tried to capture him, he would do something horrible to the young victim. No matter how desperate someone was to use a child as a shield, we couldn't let him get away with it. Campus security responded with extraordinary bravery to this man's cunning schemes. When they were able to take the child away from the wanted person, things became less stressful and more hopeful. The child was safe, even though the kidnapper hadn't been apprehended. He presumably thought he could outwit the security team, so he hid himself in the bushes in a desperate attempt to avoid being caught. The trained security dogs were something he forgot to consider. Those dogs had noses for danger and steely nerves. It didn't work out well for the escaped man because he was trapped. After a struggle in which he suffered bite wounds and felt terrible, he refused to be taken into custody. Surprisingly, my students remained composed the whole time. They did not seem to realize how serious the situation was. Maybe it was their way of coping, a way to protect themselves from the reality of the threat we were in. They continued to laugh and talk to each other, engrossed in their phones. I had to constantly tell them to lower their voices because they wouldn't stop raising them, as if that would make the situation seem more real to them. In hindsight, I can't help but be grateful for their poise. Their seemingly carefree demeanor actually gave me a strange sense of normalcy during a terrifying experience that left me feeling anxious and afraid. Like they say, ignorance is bliss sometimes. The security team ultimately carried out their task with unwavering bravery and professionalism. The child was safe, the fugitive was apprehended, and no one inside the school was hurt. The horror movie-like situation finally came to a mostly happy end, allowing us to breathe a sigh of relief. My most recent school lockdown taught me that you can never tell how people, especially teenagers, will react in an emergency. 
in an odd way, they kept us grounded and hopeful, even though their resilience and adaptability surprised us. While I personally hope I never have to experience anything similar again, I'll be ready if I do since I'm aware that sometimes the best response to a real-life horror story is to maintain composure under duress. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the first story. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment if you like it so far. That way I can keep making this content for you guys. Thank you so much. In my junior year of high school, just a few weeks before the much-anticipated summer break, a malevolent spirit infiltrated our seemingly peaceful campus, shrouding it in a chilling darkness that continues to haunt my dreams. With nothing more sinister than a harmless note that was discreetly tucked under the principal's office door. But what was written within was anything but innocent. A bomb threat that would unleash an unimaginable horror and test the limits of our group's bravery and sanity. Our trip into a nightmare world began when that note appeared on the principal's desk, a somber and unsettling sight. The fire alarms at the school, usually harmless and almost consoling in their familiarity, began to blare their sharp warning throughout the reverberating hallways. My skin crawled from the intense sound, and I became hypervigilant. As I saw my fellow students, teachers, and staff members become inconsequential parts of a risky game we had not agreed to play, my blood raced with fear. One by one, the orderly classrooms began to empty, and we found ourselves having to go through the meticulously practiced lockdown procedures. Our hearts were all pounding with fear, and it seemed as though our movements were occurring in perfect sync. We moved through the labyrinthian corridors like a well-trained army, searching for a way out of the shadowy danger that threatened to overtake us. We were rescued to the school courtyard, where we assembled in confusion. There was confusion and chaos all around us like a heavy fog, making it impossible for us to see the unknown threat. Our breaths quickened and our eyes darted wildly in all directions, revealing a visible terrified state within us. For nearly 30 minutes, we stayed close to each other, our dilemma weighing heavily on our minds. But as minutes became excruciating hours, our teenage attention spans, which were always notoriously short, came to an end. Everyone's despair seemed to have gradually given way to numbness and everyone's anxiety had become unbearable. In the middle of the chaos, one boy began to scream for help, his eyes wide with fear and his face color gone. A caring teacher hurried to assist him, but the boy's shock-induced act of retaliation, the result of a disturbed mind, made him turn against the very educator that was attempting to assist him. Chaos was king and something darker gripped our teenage souls. Couples publicly expressed their love while taking comfort in each other's arms, as though love was their defiant response to the encroaching darkness. Groups of friends emerged in the midst of the mayhem, growing bolder and more daring by the moment. Because of their impatience and teenage rebellion, Teenagers began to disobey the lockdown procedures, erring on the side of caution and finding their own way out of the building. The initial fear had seemed to have transformed into a general apathy, the disconcerting and eerie transformation that seemed to spread like a contagious illness throughout the crowd. What had once been an extremely delicate and terrifying situation had now turned into a grotesque farce, a macabre example of how quickly adolescents' attention spans can shift. Even the staff, who had been entrusted with our safety and well-being, found themselves powerless to quell the chaos and disobedience that had engulfed the student body. Despite their preparation for such circumstances, they discovered they had no control over our erratic reactions. More than its size, our school's assembly the following day will never leave my memory because of the principal's fury. He revealed the dark truth. The bomb threat was a malicious joke, 
a crafty prank that had set the stage for our terrifying ordeal. To exacerbate the situation, he disclosed that during those horrifying moments, not a single individual had adhered to the standard lockdown protocols. In the principal's fury, our transgressions were made evident. His criticisms included the students' general carelessness, their outright rejection of authority, and their blatant disregard for safety precautions. The lecture would remain with us long after the meeting ended, acting as a sobering reminder of the serious consequences of the decisions we make when we are in danger. One of those memorable last days of school, when you celebrate finishing elementary school with your friends, was what was planned. During lunch, we were just chit-chatting and having fun when the announcement blared over the shoddy intercom system. I hardly understood a word of what they were saying because the school's speakers were constantly broken. I'll be honest, I never paid much attention to that intercom jargon anyway, but this time was different. All of a sudden, all hell broke loose. Children began yelling like banshees and running toward the classrooms, their food trays flying everywhere. My friend gave me a shoulder shove and yelled, Hurry up! At which point it finally occurred to me that there was a serious problem. Previously, I had been sitting there dumbfounded like a deer in headlights. Lockdown was approaching. So, without caring whose classroom it was, we dashed inside and ducked under the first desk we saw. My chest felt as though it were trying to open due to how fast my heart was beating. I must have been around 9 or 10 years old. The tears then began to fall. I'd cried in front of my friend before, but he usually made fun of me for it. He attempted to console me by placing a hand on my shoulder this time, looking me straight in the eye. We waited for what seemed like an eternity there, hunched over that desk. Approximately 20 anxious minutes dragged on before we heard someone jiggling the doorknob and attempting to enter. Our breathing became labored as the entire room tensed up. A person standing outside played with the door for about 10 seconds before leaving. He had allegedly attacked someone and there were rumors that they were looking for him. As we hid in the dark, our hearts racing, time moved forward slowly. Unavoidably, we began to wonder if the intruder would come back. Even the toughest children in the room were trembling as fear permeated the air-like dense fog. When I started crying again, I realized that I wasn't the only one experiencing fear. The intercom finally came back to life and the lockdown was lifted after several more agonizing minutes. It turned out that someone was being chased by the police and that person had attempted a daring escape through our school. Our lives had been put on hold as he leaped over the fence and ran crazily across the field. Our nerves frayed, our legs shaky, we cautiously stepped out from our hiding place. Every face was filled with a mixture of relief and uncertainty as the classroom lights flickered back on. Teachers and students were huddled together in the hallway, sharing their personal experiences of terror as the teacher unlocked the door and it creaked open. While some kids continued to sneeze, others held on to one another as they realized how dangerously close we had come to a real catastrophe. My friend gave me a very serious look as he exited the room and entered the hallway. He was aware that it was inappropriate to make fun of my tears this time. All of us had just come through a terrifying experience and we would all remember that day for years to come. Though it was supposed to be a day of celebration and laughter, that last day of elementary school ended up being one that none of us would ever forget. Life can sometimes surprise you with a curveball when you least expect it, as we discovered. For a group of youngsters about to leave behind the security of elementary school and enter the uncharted territory of middle school, it was a sobering lesson. That day, we grew a little and understood the value of friendship and safety. And as we eventually emerged into the dazzling afternoon sun, it felt like a new beginning where we would face the challenges of the world together 
no matter what obstacles came our way. <laughs> 